AI masks in Adobe Camera Raw would rank a very close second, in my view, to the importance of AI denoise. Now, for those who have the urge to run for the hills whenever masks are mentioned, don't. It's far too good to ignore, and AI does all the hard work for us anyway. All we have to do is to learn how the masks work, and I can help there. The editing of our raw images is often achieved with just global editing alone, and we've done that in videos 5 and 11. But what if we reach a point where to change one part of the image for the better, it negatively affects the rest of the image? Now that's when we switch to strategic editing, where we mask just the parts of the image that needs more adjustment. And the AI technology helps us to do that very easily. Let's introduce masks with a very simple and practical demonstration. Now with this image opened up into Adobe Camera Raw, we need to bear in mind that the area we're about to mask is the area we want to change, and that all masks broadly work the same. So what would we want to do here? Well, I was hoping to take some of that vivid blue from the water. It looks quite nice, but maybe a little unnatural. But of course, if I move my temperature a little bit to the right, then I can get the water looking a little bit more natural in my view, but the bird then looks rather too colorful in the evening light. So what I'm going to do is move that temperature slider a little bit to the right and ignore the effect on the bird. But what I can now do is to mask the bird by selecting the subject. And we do that from this icon here. And we have three main ways to create a mask. Subject, sky and background. Here I'm going to go to subject, but below this you can see objects, brush, linear and one or two others. But there you can see how effective the AI mask has been. So if I go down to my color options within the mask, because now I'm just changing what's within that masked area. Now the masked area is shown to us in this red color. We can change this color if we go to this icon at the bottom of the create new mask panel, but I've never found a need for that. The mask is automatically removed as soon as I start editing or changing any of these sliders. But once again, we can do that manually by turning it on or off with this little tick box at the bottom left. But all I wanted to do here was to take some of the warmth off of the heron. So if I pick this up and move it to the left, you can see how I can put a lot more whiteness into that bird just by a little tweak to the left. But I'm now not affecting the water. Strategic editing. If that's all I wanted to do with the masks, I could go back to the top right and reselect the basic tabs, the one we normally see when the image first opens. Because when we are working on our image, we may have the need to go back and adjust the mask. And we can do that here as many times as we need. Because once I go to the mask option on the right, there you can see the mask that we created. If I mouse over the mask, we get a reminder of the area we have masked. And of course, once we click on that mask, we could go back in and we could change it as many times as we like. Of course, once we're happy, then we can just open this image up into Photoshop, assuming that the editing was complete. Now, when I go back to the mask and I hover over it, once again, we see the overlay, but we've got some options on the right. One of those is where we can turn the mask on and off. So if we want to get an evaluation of what we've just done, to decide if we've got it right, we can do a before and after. 
In these three little dots here, we have a number of options. We can rename the mask, although being able to mouse over it and see it is always good enough for me. We can invert the mask, duplicate. We're gonna to come to some of these in other videos. The important one really is we can delete the mask if we decide to go another route. Once we've actually selected the first of our masks, then if we wanted another mask, because we can have as many as we wish, then we would select it from this option here. And there are all the options we have for masking. And we're gonna deal with, I think, most of these over the course of these videos. Now, I suppose we could argue that in the previous image, the masking was pretty easy to do given that nice clean blue water all around the subject, but that's not the case here. So what I'd like to do here, this was shot in very dull conditions. I think it was actually raining at the time. I'd like to lighten the animal. I want to make the animal a little bit lighter, not a lot, but if I raise it, I raise the background as well. I'd like to keep the background as dark as I can get away with so that when I lift the tones in the animal itself, then the animal stands out proudly. So I'm gonna to go to my mask once again, and to select the subject once again, and as you can see, it's done a pretty good job. So all I'm going to do here is to go to the exposure and tweak it a little bit to the right, just to lift it. I may even choose to add a little bit of warmth with the temperature, don't wanna to go too far and make it look unnatural. And I could even go down, open up the effects, and if I wanted to look at some clarity in the animal, I could do that. Don't worry if that then takes you back to your exposure and you tweak that up and down, but you've got all of these sliders to determine exactly what you want to do with your image. Strategic editing, it really is the way forward. Now with this image, I'd like to lighten the depths of the shed around the back and the top. So I'm gonna pick up a mask, and this time I'm gonna select the background. Now when we do that, you'll notice it's doing a great job, but perhaps it's picking up areas on the left-hand side and even down the front that maybe I don't want. Well, sometimes these things happen and we have an option to deal with that. If I select subtract, I'm asked which tool do I wish to use to subtract from that mask. I tend to go for the brush nine times out of 10. The brush we can change in the way we change all brushes with the bracket keys. But the brush has its own set of parameters here. You can see the feather is maximum, the flow is around 29, usually I'll keep it about that. Density is well up. If I make my brush bigger, I can now start to brush over this area. And I can start to select or remove the background, as you can see. I'm doing it very carefully, but if I push the flow up, you'll see it work much more vividly. There you can see it. So it's very easy using these tools to manufacture a mask, which then would allow us maybe to just lift the shadows in the background, maybe a little bit of light in the background. And there I've achieved what I set out to achieve. So we've created a mask. AI didn't get it perfect. So we just give it a little bit of help, but AI even helps with the help. This introduction to masks, the video, is rapidly approaching 10 minutes, and I think that's enough for the first session. But to bring it to a close, let me just bring my cursor up into the Create New Mask option, because even now, I can turn off the changes that I did with the brush. I can mouse over and see them. I can mouse over and see the original mask. And of course, I can go back in and I can adjust this as many times as I wish until I open it up into Photoshop. I'll see you next time.